Hi guys, Jack here. In this video we are solving some linear equations with brackets in question 10 and then in question 11 and 12 we cover in questions on inequalities and uh, they progressively get harder so uh, feel free to skip to the question you're after and the time is in red. Question 10, now we're still solving like in question 9, so we're going to try to find out what x equals such that the left hand side equals the right hand side. The only difference for question 10 compared to 9 is we're now looking at fractions which makes things a little bit, a little bit spicy. Okay, so let's look at the first one. Uh, I'm going to straight away times the left hand side by 2 to get rid of this 2 down the bottom. And because I've times the left hand side by 2, I also need to times the right hand side by 2. So um, if I have, oh, I will write it, 2x minus 4 all over 2, I times the top by 2, equals 3 times 2 is 6, and you can see why I times that, because now I can just cancel that and that. So I'm left with, I'm just left with x minus 4 equals 6. And now I'm going to add 4 to the left, and add 4 to the right to get rid of this minus 4. So x minus 4 plus 4 is x, 6 plus 4 is 10. Okay, so there's the answer to the first one. Let's look at the second one now. First step I'm going to do, as a general rule, if you have a number by itself, without an x, you should usually, or you should always deal with that first. So don't, don't deal with this number attached to the x first. Always deal with the number that doesn't have an x on it. So I'll rewrite that, plus 2. So, after all that talk, what I mean is I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides to get rid of this minus 2. So, 3x over 2 plus 2 minus 2 will just leave me with 3x over 2 equals 8 minus 2 is 6. Cool. Now I'm two steps away from finishing. I'm going to times the left hand side and the right hand side by 2 to get rid of this number below here. So I'm going to times that by 2, times that by 2. So I'll leave that with just, I'll, I'll come down here, 3x equals 12. Because when I times that by 2, that would cancel with that. And now I'm going to divide left and right by 3 to get rid of this 3. I'll be left with x equals 12 divided by 3 is 4. So, I will stress, key thing to remember here, if you do something on the left hand side, like divide by 3 to get rid of this 3, you also need to have to do on the right hand side. So similar to here, I subtracted 2 on the left, I also need to subtract 2 on the right. Okay, third one now, I'll rub this out for some room. Now, this is an interesting one. I'll show you a little trick that I know for this. So you've got a fraction equals another fraction. A little tip, a hint from John. When you go to this situation, do a thing called cross multiply. And what does that mean? It means that, actually I'll draw it in red so you can see. Cross multiply means I'm going to times this and this, and I'm going to times that and that. Draw a big X through the equal sign. So, let's look at this one first, and that'll get rid of the fraction. Oh, I'll come up here, I'll get more of my colours and my pens all mixed up. So, 4 by all of this will be 4, 2x plus 12 equals, now I've done the cross multiply 7 and this. Great. Now I'm going to need to expand these brackets. Expand the left hand side first. Uh, 4 by 12 is 48. 7 by 3, 21x plus 35. Cool. Now remember the goal here is to get x equals something. And we've, uh, we haven't actually seen this before, so I'll show you what to do here. I've got x's on both sides. Another tip from John, whichever side has the highest number of x's, you want to take away 
oh sorry, you want to take away the lowest. So 8x is less than 21x, so I'm going to take away 8x from both sides. So minus 8x from 8x here will leave nothing. Now this doesn't affect the, the 48. 21x minus, is that in the screen? There we go. 21x minus 8x is 13x. And doesn't affect the 35 because when you're adding or subtracting like terms, um, you only add or subtract the like terms. So you got 48 equals 13x plus 35. Now I want to deal with this plus 35, so I'm going to subtract 35 from both sides. So 48 minus 35 is 13. And 35 minus 35 is going to be 0. That's the whole reason why we do it. So we've got 13 equals 13x. And I want to get x by itself, so I'm going to divide both sides by 13. And 13 divided by 13 just leaves me with x, what I want. And then 13 divided by 13 is 1. So x equals 1. Now I'm just going to go back, for those who are interested to see why I did this cross multiply here, it's a bit of a like two steps in one, a little trick that I've learned over time. What it is actually doing, I've, I've done the cross multiply, if I times both sides, if I want to get rid of this 4, I'll times top and bottom by 4, so it'll be 4 outside of 3x plus 1. And because I did that on the left hand side, oh, on the right hand side, I also needed it on the left hand side. And after the same here, I, uh, I times by 7 on the left and 7 on the right, and then those cancel. So that's, that's how it all works, but if you want to skip those few steps, the cross multiply is how I do it. Hey guys, after question 11, it's Jack here to kick on. Uh, question 11, now we're into a topic called inequalities. Now I think this is a, is a topic that I was most confused on in school because uh, I think I got, tried, I, got, I got taught it all in one sort of day or one step and it didn't really make sense and I think the best way to do these inequality questions is just to do a fair bit of practice and then the answers start to make sense. So that's just sort of my two cents from, from learning inequalities. And what inequalities means is that they're pretty much a simple algebraic equations like we've been seeing in the previous 10 questions. But instead of equal signs now, we're seeing these little, these little arrows or like this or could be like a, could be like that or could be a little line here. And you might have got taught in class already, but this one here uh, is different to this one here, which is different to this one here. Because this one, well, the arrow means that this side is smaller than this side. Okay, so instead of this side equaling this side now, it's kind of this equation where this side's smaller than this side because this is the pointy end of the, of the little triangle. So this one here, or this side, will be bigger than this side. And here, this side will be equal to or smaller than this side. And that's what this little double line, this would mean. It's, it, it's smaller than this side, but it could also be equal to. So that's just a little introduction to what these signs kind of mean. But I still think the best way to approach these questions is to pretend it's an equal sign and then just do it as if we've normally been doing it and let's just see what result we get. So let's go ahead and pretend this is an equal sign and let's just do our normal maths. Well, we want to get x by itself because we're solving for x. So we can minus 6 from this side minus 6 from that side, so we're left with 2x, and we let's just put this thing, but in our head we think it's, it's still an equal sign, and 14 minus 6 is 8, now we want to get x by itself, so we can go divide by 2, divided by 2, x is, now 8 divided by 2 is 4, so, so far we've been used to saying this would be x equals 4. But in these inequality questions, well, our answer is actually x is less than 4. And what that means is that this x is less than 4 answer is appropriate for the equation that we're given. That means that for any value of x that's less than 4, right, put in for here, this is correct. 
that this side will be smaller than this side. So let's see if, if what's a number less than four? Let's say three. Three is, three is less than four. So if we substitute in three into here, we will get two times three, which is six, plus six, which is 12. And 12 is smaller than 14. Now if we just take a number bigger than four, just, just to check, maybe, maybe five, two times five is 10, plus six is 16. But 16 isn't smaller than 14, so that's why this is our answer. Okay, now I'm not gonna labor on with that explanation for the next few questions. That's just for the, the newbies there that wanted to see how to solve an inequalities question. Okay, same thing here. Let's just pretend it's an equal sign. Well, I wanna get x by itself, so we times by five. And times by five. So we'll get x is smaller or equal than, well, two times five is 10. And if you wanted to check all these sorts of things again, well, you can, you can uh, see that if we make 10 in there, 10 divided by five is two, and two is smaller or equal than two. So it does fit. So there's another one of our, another one of our answers. Now, if you're completely confused about my, my explanation of how to finish the question, don't, don't be worried because I was totally confused when I got taught, but as you do practice, you start getting the right answers and then the answers start making more sense. Okay, here, I want to get x by itself. Let's just pretend this is a little equal sign for now. Well, we can add 3 to this side, add 3 to this side, because you can notice pretty quickly we want to get rid of this. So we'll be left with x over 4. Now, if we add 3 here, we'll get 8. And if we want to get x by itself, we keep this sign here, and 4 times 8, well, 4 times 8 will be 32. And if you were to substitute this in, this uh, inequalities equation that we were given would be satisfied. So there are our early questions on inequalities. Now, question 12 are the more advanced of the inequalities questions. Now, that we started in question 11, so if you've never seen what an inequality sign is, these little little arrows instead of equal signs now. Have a look at question 11 and see how we approached it. And how I did it in question 11 was, was I just treated it as a equal sign and then we just solved it and then we could get an answer which which would eventually make sense. So uh, I want to keep doing that here but there's only one difference between one rule of thumb that you have to use right, instead of just making it in your head as an equal sign which will which we'll, we'll do in these three questions, that one rule of thumb, all right? So I'll, I'll explain it when we get to that step. So here, let's take away seven, take away seven, because we want to get x by itself, solving for x. So we'll get left-hand side, minus five x, and this will be smaller than or equal to, that's what these little lines mean. Now nine minus seven is two. Now, usually, we just say x by itself, so we can divide both sides by negative 5. But, here's this one rule of thumb. If you ever divide or times by a negative number, you have to flip the inequality sign. Okay, so that's the only rule of thumb. Remember that. If we divide or times by a negative number, so far in the previous questions, all been positive, we have to flip this little inequality sign. So. If we divide by negative 5, negative 5, we'll go 2 over negative 5. So this should be our answer, but we have to flip. So now uh, it turns into smaller and equal to, then greater or equal to. Now this would, if you do a mathematical proof, and I'm not going to do it, you probably will see it in class actually, but uh, this is just the, the Fox rule of thumb to, to quickly get to the answer. Okay. Let's do this same thing for the next two questions. Okay, we have this five minus two x, all divided by three, and this is all greater than seven. So if we have a big fraction over one number, we can times it up. So times by three, times by three, we'll be left with five minus two x. Now this stays the same, because we're timesing it by a positive number. Seven times three is 21. Now we want to get rid of this 5, so minus 5, minus 5, so we'll have minus 2x, and this will be 21 minus 5 is 16. Now, 
divided by negative 2, divided by negative 2. But we're dividing by that negative number. So, I'll let you do it, but you have to switch the sign. Okay? So, 16 divided by negative 2, divided by negative 2, that'll be negative 8. But this has to be switched. Ooh, there we go. There's our answer to the second question. And the third one here, well, this is just going to take a little bit of rearranging. We have x's on either side. Uh, okay, let's just treat this as an equal sign and see how we go here. Well, we can minus x from this side and minus x from this side. And I'm going to do it in one step because you probably know how to do this part. We also can, uh, let's put the numbers on here as we're putting the x's over here. We can minus 5 and minus 5. So, if we do this in one step, bring the x over. So we'll put a little inequality sign. Uh, this will cancel out to be 0. 2x minus x will be just 1x. Now, plus 5 minus 5 is 0. But 1 minus 5 is negative 4. And there's our answer. Because we didn't have to do any times you know, dividing by negative numbers, uh, we got straight to our answer. And these are probably the more complicated inequality questions that you will find.